Hi everyone, welcome back and welcome to another episode of QR Hack. We are giving you hints on how you can approach quantitative reasoning questions. And if you are just joining me for the first time, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Also, click on the bell button so that you get notified anytime I post new video. If you don't forget, in the last two videos, I gave you a hint on how you can approach QR questions. And I made you understand that not knowing how to solve quantitative questions or not knowing how to approach quantitative reasoning questions is not a big deal at all. In fact, it is very normal. So, you know, I gave you as an example, just like your friend keep a key inside a room and he asks you to find it. You know, you don't know where, I mean, you are not there when the key was kept, so you might not be able to know it. So if you don't know it, it is not a problem. But the good news about quantitative reasoning is that there are some hints you can actually follow that will make you understand how you are going to approach this kind of question. So, and in this video, I'm going to continue from that. Don't forget the first rule, or the first hint I told you was to what? Check the shape with which the questions come with. Check whether the shape, perhaps it is rectangular in nature or triangular in nature. As you can see here, you can see that our shape here is what? Is triangular in nature. So this is showing that there might be a possible relationship between this guy and this guy and this guy. You understand? Likewise, the relationship might be between this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So if you want to take off any rule, then you have to think of a rule that probably associates all these four numbers together. And the second rule is that well, after you've checked, I mean, the shape with which the questions come for, uh, with, as well as the direction the shapes, I mean, is going, this says, you know, it is triangular in nature and it's the direction also moves down here. I hope you understand that. So apart from the fact that you understand the, what, the shape as well as the direction, then you have to think of a rule, being it addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square, square root, that you can combine together in such a way that it can work for all the examples you were given. Don't forget, you have to take note of the distractor. Don't say, okay, now, oh, the rule work for example one and just move to the example two. You can't do that. You have to ensure that if you are given two examples, the rule you are going to take must what must work for all the examples you are given. You have to, I will make you understand, I mean, why it is very important to, I mean, be avoid, to, to avoid distractor and to ensure that the rule you take works for all the what works for all the example. Look at this one now. You know, the first time I was checking this question, I, I thought, okay, now, what if I had this guy and this guy and this guy together? It will give me this. Yeah, it is true because one plus two, that is three, three plus three, that is six, six plus four, third. I was very happy. But I have to ensure that this first rule actually was for the what? The second example. Okay, let us try it. Five plus three, eight. Eight plus eight, 16. 16 plus 20. Oh, that is not possible. So then I cannot use that rule. The rule fails. Okay, now, then I was also thinking of another rule. And you know what I was thinking was this. Let's say I say 1 plus 4. I hope you understand now. Or if I don't say 1 plus 4, let me say 4 squared. You know 4 squared will give me 16. If I had all these three guys together, that is 6. 16 minus 6 will also give me 10. Okay, let me see if it works for this guy as well. Before, before you can use the rule, it must actually work for this guy. So 2 squared is 4. 4 minus, even the sum of all these three numbers are even more than what? Well, it's even more than, I mean, 4. So, you cannot get 34. Ooh, what am I going to use now? Okay, now let me shift a bit and move to the second example and see if I can think of any rule. Okay, now. Then I was checking. Oh, then the rule comes to my mind. 5 multiplied by 8 will give me 40. Okay, now 3 times 2 again will give me 6. 40 minus 6, that is 34. Bravo. Okay, now, but don't forget, you have to be aware of distractor. The reason why I said you have to be aware of distractor is that even if you check, I mean, one of these rules, 
that doesn't work for the second I mean example if you check it with some of these guy you will see probably we are going to get the result I hope you understand now okay now see down 5 plus 2 that is 7 7 plus 7 14 14 plus 1 15 you know it is even in the first option that is distractor the examiner wants to distract you you have to avoid that so that's why you have to ensure the rule works for all of them so 5 times 4 here again is 40 40 minus 6 that is 34 okay let us check here 1 times 3 that is 3 3 minus 8 that will not give us 10 whoa okay now something also come to my mind what if i say 5 squared that is 25 then 25 plus i mean the sum of these two guys 3 plus 8 will give me 11 25 plus 11 will give me 36 36 minus 2 that is 34 okay let's see whether it works for this first one as well so one square it is one one plus the sum of this that is six six minus four oh that is two. probably that does not work okay what can we now use think of it are you also seeing what i'm saying are you saying the something okay now if you are saying that my mind is telling me that if i multiply this guy by this guy I multiply these two guys as well and take their sum i'm going to have the result can we try that out one multiplied by four will give me four two multiplied by three will give me six and six plus four will give me ten i hope you understand now okay let's see whether it works for the second one five multiplied by two that is ten so three multiplied by eight that is twenty four twenty four plus ten will give me thirty four Bravo, très très bien. So it works for the two examples. Then I'm now free to what? To continue with the remaining questions. Okay, let, let us now go to the question. To solve this, 5 times 1, that is 5. 2 times 7, that is 14. Then this one will give me 14 plus 5, that is 19. Can you see? So as soon as you know the rule, then you can actually solve the remaining question. Okay, now look at this as well. This one is 43. You know, we have to find the other guy, the other side of this. You know, don't forget the product, the sum of the product of these two guys will uh, probably give this. That is why you multiply this and this together. 5 times S, maybe you call this X. You know that is 5X. 1 times 3, that is 3. Then your 5S plus 3 must be able to give you 43. You know, if you solve it for that, then you have 5 is equal to 3 minus 3. 5s is equal to 40, which implies s is equal to 40 divided by 5. That is 8. You understand now? This guy is 8. Or if you don't want to stretch yourself, since I know that this is what? The sum of this, the product of this and this will give me 43. First of all, subtract 3 from here. Then I'm going to have 40. Then you now say, okay, now what number are you going to multiply by? 5 to give you 40 and that is it i hope you understand now so that is that okay now can you do this following the same order 4 times 2 that is 8 it means what is left when you subtract it you know the sum of these and this should be should be able to give us 38 it means if i subtract this guy i'm still going to have 30 here then you're not going to say what are you going to multiply by 5 to give you 30 and that is 6 i hope you understand now if you want to solve it mathematically what are you going to do you can make this as x, then I'm going to have what? 5x, that is the product of this guy, then plus 8, 4 times 2 is equal to 38. Then you have 5s equal to 38 minus 8. So then you have 5s is equal to 30, which implies s equal to what? 30 divided by 5, that is 6. Okay, how do you do this again? This is 36. 4 times 8 is 30, uh, 9 times 4 is 36. Just subtract. 36 from 60, that will give you 24. What is such a number you are going to multiply by 4 to give you 24? That is also 6. I hope you understand now. You see now that 6, I mean, times 4, that is 24. And 24 plus 36 will give you 60. Can you see it is very simple? So that's how you are going to be solving like that. So if you are really keen about understanding or having some hint on how to approach quantitative reasoning questions, then you have come to the right place. Please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel, then I'm going to see you in the next episode. Thank you.